increased our approach angle by at least like 12 degrees, 15 so, degrees. See, before it was this, and now it's. Are you measuring this with your pizza cutting? Measuring yeah, my pizza, pizza cutting. Is that what yeah. you're doing? <laughs> What's up, Light Bright Nation? Hey, what is going on, Light Bright Nation? So, as you guys know, our Jeep back here only has two mechanical components left on it that are factory Rubicon components. And that is, of course, the electronic sway bar disconnect and the, the transfer case. The transfer case. So, Steve, Steve, Steve we Atlas. Need you to now, today, though, <laughs> what's super special is today we are actually eliminating one of those still factory components <laughs> so that there will only be one more thing on the Jeep that is still technically mechanically factory and obviously we kind of just gave away which one we're getting rid of because <laughs> the Atlas is still not quite out yet but it's coming for the JL which means that today we're switching out our electronic sway bar disconnect with a rock shock anti-rock now you guys remember we've already installed one on the rear of the JL and for these to work really well you kind of have to pair it with a rear and a front yeah not to mention the electronic one eventually goes out you it get it in water mud work all you know, the time and we have the taser and the taser allows us to turn off completely and all that but sometimes it when it wants to yeah not all the time so right now I love how fast the Jeep is on and off-road and after we do this, no more pushing the button. I can literally go from dunes to rocks, back to dunes, to whoops, to the highway. We don't have to disconnect, reconnect the nope. sway bar at any point ever nope. again. It'll it'll already- It'll be done. What we need, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, but before we swap it out, we wanna do a cool little test, which we've never actually really been able to do. And that is show you guys what the difference is with the sway bar connected, disconnected, electronically, disconnected completely, and then, what it's like with an anti-rock installed. Okay, so right now it is fully connected. Everything's connected and this is the flex that we have. You can actually look in here and see the, the bushings under an extreme amount of tension. There's a big gap here between the bar and the bushing. It's pulling up on that. You can see we are barely touching there. We got it up off the ground. So we are at complete right. articulation. So right now, we'll just touch the tire each time and go right here. So right now we're exactly at 29 inches, boom. Fully connected, so fully connected with the factory electronic sway bar. So now I'm gonna push the button, disconnect it. Now, from what I've been told is that the factory Rubicon has like still a bushing inside of it that even with you when you push the button, it still has some tension to it. Okay. It's not working. It says disconnected. Alright. Sway yeah. bar. Yeah, sway bar is disconnected. That, that's a bit higher than 29 <laughs> inches. That's a little higher than 29 inches. That is 40 and a quarter. Dude. So for 29 inches to 40 and a quarter. If that doesn't demonstrate why you disconnect your sway bar when you go off-roading and rock crawling, that is why. Very clear. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the end links from the sway bar itself, so the sway bar is not in play at all. Just to see if there's a difference. Just to see if there's a difference. Now our setup is a little different than a lot of people's, just the height of our springs, the length of our shocks, we're a little bit more than the, your, your, your normal. modified. Yeah, than your normal build. So it might not be as drastic here as it would be, say if we were on 37s and had a different setup. Because we do have a lot more of bump stop here. suspension yeah. or something. So, but we want to see what the difference is between electronically disconnected and actually disconnected, if there is one. Right. Now, also keep in mind, that flex isn't everything. Some people go beyond flex to where their springs are falling out or whatever. If there's no downforce on this tire here, if that tire's up on a rock and this tire is still on the ground but there's not actually anything pushing it into the ground, you're not really getting any bite from it. So it's really almost no different than it actually carrying a little bit of tire, except now you have possible springs falling out and geometry issues with just everything under there actually. It's all about functionality. It is. So we're gonna put it back down and pull these guys off.
Now with our setup, with how much bump we had to add because of the Hemi, the up travel we had to limit, I don't think this is gonna be an issue, but we, you don't know. Let's, I mean, we're gonna see what happens. Now I do think in a more modest setup, there is a difference in there, but let's see and find out. Nope, on our setup, it's exactly the same. Now, when we say with our setup, what we're talking about is you guys remember when we installed the Hemi and we swapped to the long arm and everything, we had to change what our up travel was. We had to bump stop the rig because we were hitting a few things from the bottom of the engine, like the oil filter and what was it? The, the AC compressor. And the AC compressor. So we had to bump it because that was our limiting factor was actually interference or clearance issues with our suspension and that. So. Again, on a different setup with maybe a factory engine, you might be able to see a difference, but at least with ours, there isn't. But what I'm very curious is to see what the change is gonna be once we install the anti-rock, which should be pretty cool. So we're having to pull this bottom plate, skid plate off, and what the reason that's there is to protect the Rubicon factory, factory electronic. Yeah, so that's there to protect that. But now that we're getting rid of that, I'm sorry, Dan at Next Venture Motorsports, we are no longer gonna have a Freedom Chicken right here because once we pull this off, this won't go back on, and we're actually gonna cut the horns off that hold this plate on, and so all we're gonna have left is the bumper. So to help us go over the concept and how this was made, designed, what it's for, we have actually Mr. Curry himself here. This kit is not, as we were just talking about, for an on-road sports car feel, right? Like This is an off-road sway bar. So you're, <laughs> when you're buying this kit, you just want to make your Jeep work better off-road. You're not buying this kit because you want to drive through the mountains and, and you want a sports car. This is to make your Jeep be more balanced off-road, to make it have more traction, articulate better off-road. You don't have to disconnect it. You go right from the street right to the, the trail. Our standard kit comes with a 770 bar or a bar that's basically a little bit bigger than three quarters of an inch. And we offer that bar in an 850 bar. So, which is about, you know, 80 thousandths bigger in diameter, which is going in, to increase that rate by approximately 20%, somewhere in that range. So if you're looking for, if you're maybe doing some overlanding or you have a heavier Jeep, you have a big winch, you're carrying a lot of equipment with you. Rooftop tent, anything right. like that. Right, then you may want to go to the bigger bar. Right. But yep. you got to remember that bigger bar is still going to be lighter than your factory bar would have been. And you can see, you can see the difference here. So this is the bigger bar that he's talking about. And this is your smaller one. Now the bigger bar, which you called 0 0.850, 850,000. So this one right here is what they typically put in their JK kit because the JKs are heavier than the JLs, which is what this is. This is what typically comes with your JL. Please, I just want to mention something is there would be no extra charge if you, whatever bar you want. Okay. So if okay. you call in and say, hey, I want the bigger bar, there's no extra charge. It's just a matter of us making a note on that order. So if you have a jail and you're ordering it and you want the bigger bar, you need to call in. Don't just order it. Call up and say, hey guys, I run a rooftop tent. I run a bunch of extra gear in the back. My Jeep's a lot heavier than the stock one. I want the, I want the bigger bar. And that's going to give you more stability. But the greatest thing about this is, especially for what we do, is I can go from the dunes to rock crawling to whoops. I don't have to like stop and hit the button or every time I hit 20 miles an hour and the sway bar kicks back on and locks back up and then you're going through getting shook. And we're set up because we already have the rear. Now we're balancing it out with the front, right? right? So it's and, gonna be. And that's the idea when we were lifting with the forklift, when we had the sway bar connected originally, the rear suspension was doing all the work, right. 100%. Because the, the front sway bar was so big, it was completely controlling it. And then you disconnected the front sway bar. And so now it's making the front do more because there's no sway bar on the front, but you have a bar in the back. It would actually make the front go all the way to where it actually crushed your bump stops in the front. If you go over, over a rock that's six inches, 
you want the front to go up three inches and the back to go down three inches, basically. So think of it, I'm trying to keep the body flat when I'm off-roading. Right. So not how your tires are moving, how the body is moving. The sway bar is to keep the body, we're trying to keep the body as flat as possible. Which allows me to do crazier things more off camber and you feel safer because you don't have the weight of that vehicle leaning all the way over and with the front sway bar completely disconnected, you ha it's not helping keep the body flat. That's all happening in the rear at this point. Now with this, it's gonna allow still full articulation, but it's also gonna help keep that body flatter when I'm going through crazier things. It's gonna help with stability off-road, essentially. Right. It's gonna give you a lot more confidence in your vehicle and you drive it because of the way it feels too. On-road, compared to the stock factory bar that's completely locked in, you are gonna notice a little bit more body roll on-road. So if you're taking tight mountain turns and stuff, you may notice, now it's completely still controllable. It's not like, oh no, I've even completely just- It's not dis like a disconnected sway bar. It's not like a disconnected yes, sway no, bar no. at all. You still have, that's why it's there. And that's the whole point of this, is that you can take it through the mountains, jump right off onto the trail and go. One thing I wanna talk about, it's a feeling that a lot of people have when they're jeeping. If you disconnect your sway bar, and let's say you're going downhill and you're off camber a little bit, and you're getting ready to drop your left front tire into a foothold. When that tire, with no sway bar on there, when that tire drops into the hole, it's gonna feel like your right rear is gonna lift. Yes. Yeah, and you get that, you know how your butt kind of crinches up? Yeah, you're like, oh God. Those yeah. butt pucker moments. And, and that feel <laughs> that it's gonna go over. That's one of the feels I tell people, and, and they kind of get it because they've had that feeling before. Every off-roader knows that. Right, with the any rock on there, when you drop that left front, it's going to feel like the right front actually went down. It went down together. So you're going to have a lot less of that feel like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go, and you're going to hit the brake or hit the gas because you think the thing is going over. That's one of the feelings I like to describe to people about the advantage of the anti-rock. That feeling, you're not going to get there. It's going to be a lot less. You're not going to have that, oh, I'm going. You know, it's going to go yeah. over, and you're going to... Most people, the reaction to that is going to hit the brakes, brake. and then they yeah. go over. And then <laughs> actually, yeah. if you have a lot of experience off-roading or an ultra four, you your experience it. is hit the gas, gas right. go, or, go, or, or roll go. through it, or if something <laughs> happened, yeah, it's either the gas or the brake. But most people, they're always going to hit the brake, and that's going to make it worse, especially this, when you're going downhill. Yeah, right, it weight transfers, and what this does is this helps keep that weight transfer more in check. And one thing I, I've noticed too is on road, your really bad California highways or just uh, potholes in the road, this kind of allows the axle, uh, other than being fully locked, like when you're fully, when it's fully connected, that makes it super rigid. This allows the front axle to kind of just dance over yeah. those things. So that's another thing that it'll actually give you a more comfortable ride on bumps like that. It also works when you're on like a rocky road, you're going down the road and with your sway bar connected, you're just, and you're like rocking back and forth, you disconnect it, all of a sudden, now the tires are moving up and down and you're as the, body inside you're not getting as much of the, right. the trauma that you would have had and that's why we're here <laughs>
two bolts that goes on and then we'll turn the tires like so and slide the bar in like so now as far as the bar is concerned we're actually going to start with the thicker bar and go from there because we're gonna put the thicker bar in flex it out and if we're still at the same amount of flex as we used to have then that's what we're going to keep because that way we have the most stability and we still have all the flex now if for some reason that bar is too stiff and maybe we're an inch off or it's not allowing full articulation we will then swap in the smaller bar and see what happens i just want to point out for a second that mr curry is turning wrenches on our jeep right now and if that's not like the most <laughs> flattering thing in the entire world i don't know what is now the installation is really really simple once you get the old one out you literally put on these brackets then it has are they uhmw spacers in this too yeah, UHMW. so no. the, the plastic ends that go in are uhmw they get machined down those press in the bar slides through it and, and then you put on your end links you put on your end links and then you're done Now when you're installing the arms, one thing you want to keep in mind is that both arms are clocked exactly parallel with one another. So they're both at the exact angle or whatever it is so that you don't have one like up here and one like down there. So just be hyper aware of that if you're installing this at home on your own. Okay, so now we're going to flex it back out because we've got the anti-rock front and rear. Now in the rear, it does actually have multiple holes drilled, so you can kind of tighten it up or loosen it as you wish. The front actually just has one spot. And the biggest thing to note right now, especially when you do any kind of upgraded end links or anything, is to make sure that you never invert your sway bar when it's fully flexed out. You don't want this to end up going Yeah, because if it's a, when it fully droops out, when it, if it get, ever gets close to straight, then you're not long enough on your links. So we're going to look at that right now when we do this. But the greatest thing is now, no more button, no more anything. It's just... It's just, just is. Okay, so if you look right here, we're not anywhere close to inverting at all. Like that is no problem. I mean, that so baby is totally fine. that baby is flat. This one's not going near high enough to hit anything. So Flaring that turned wise, out. Flipping wise, interference wise. So we're at 38 and a quarter. All right, so with the anti-rock, we're at 38 inches. I think before we were right at 40 inches. Yeah. So we've got about two inches less, but what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go and we're driving it on the road now so we can get a feel for what the on-road drivability feels like compared to what it did with a full sway bar connected before. And then we can decide if we wanna to swap to the smaller, what would typically come with the JL. Go over everybody's curbs and stuff. <laughs> Just start popping <laughs> curbs. Just go. So it doesn't kind of wiggle it. So I can I can I can definitely feel more body roll, but it not doesn't keep going. Yeah, it's not like a it's not like a no sway bar connected or like shot, you know, suspension kind of a thing. It's just kind of like a maybe a few degrees more sorry stuff's in the back. Maybe a few degrees more body roll than what you'd expect with a fully connected sway bar yeah but, that's but not... it's not nearly as bad as honestly what i was expecting when it was explained to me it has a little bit more pitch and then it stops it honestly doesn't feel all that much different in my personal opinion like it just still feels like we're driving around in a jeep i was expecting more significant difference honestly i mean do you want to switch you want to try just see what the well, I'm gonna have them... the regular jl bar looks like or feels like and yeah i mean we can i that it really doesn't feel that he forgets like, that I mean, the camera it's just is like, like a little recording and then it stops. It, like, it's not a lot of body roll. No.
Now keep in mind, we're actually just swapping this out just for the sake of being able to right now. Just because we only got up to 38 and a quarter inches doesn't mean that you lost that flex. That flex is still there. All it means is that it's gonna take a little bit more like when you start to actually get bound up, like when you really need it. Hardly ever am I ever driving and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go four wheeling and just put one tire in the air While just cause. all the other three are, are on flat are ground. Are just on flat still. ground. The only time you do that is when you're stacking Jeeps for photos or just doing a poser shot. This so, is just a good way to really visualize or help you guys visualize kind of what changes the Jeep is going through. But again, usually if this tire's up in the air, so is this tire or that tire or that so tire. They're all they're doing all different doing things. Something and that flex is there. It just the bar just needs a little more. It has more resistance than no bar. Which is oh, there. you know what we should. You know what I should have done. It's too late now. I should have actually put the have gauges two. on in the dash to show the body lean. That's what we should have done. Well, has the pitch and roll where you would know that the body is more flat. If I actually picked up the back end, it would force the front uh, bar All to go further way. because now the weight's going to the front instead of the back. See, yeah. So when I pick up the front end, the, the weight's weight. automatically transferring onto the back. Right. When I pick up the back end, it'll actually make the front bar go further. It'll because right. it'll make the front bar work harder. Right. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. So it's right at the same 38. So you see, so actually both of them turned to be right at 38 inches. Again, instead not of super scientific, but yeah, uh, instead of the 40 that was fully disconnected, and then you don't have the actual. It's really hard to see, but the body itself is literally. It's not leaning much at all. It's flatter. The body is flatter. All right, let's go that? drive it. So what's really cool to me right now is the reality of what this anti-rock actually feels like inside the Jeep is significantly different than what my expectation was because the way it was originally explained to me, I was expecting something more like no sway bar feel. And that is absolutely not what it is. Like if we go hit this at an angle, like you were saying, it's not stiff up front. <laughs> See? It just like... Right, because you don't yeah. have the stiffness of the connected sway bar. Honestly, I think I like the I like the softer one more. You like this one more? Yeah. We thought well, with let's the. Let's see when we pop up on this. See? <laughs> we just went up on a curb, and it literally feels like you're off roading. Like when you have a disconnected off road sway bar. <laughs> that was a nothing. way bigger test. Did That's a way that? bigger test. There's nothing there. It's like hitting. A, it's like hitting a rock off road. It's very smooth. Not that you're see? necessarily hitting curbs all the time nope. on road, but. I'm at 40 in the rear. <laughs> That's funny. It, like it swapped. Look. Oh, yeah. We're at 40 in the That's rear. Like but look at the body right here. That is all the way dropped out, and it's like the body's look pretty how, level. Look how like safe that looks. Okay, so now a couple things to remember and reiterate. First off, if you have a lot more weight up top on your rig, like a rooftop tent or a hard top or a big spare in the back or something like that, you'll probably feel the difference between the two bar sizes a little bit more than we did. We've got a soft top tent, we've got no spare, a lot of our weight's down low minus the Hemi. So you might feel a difference there if you have a lot of, or a higher center of gravity, so to speak. Second thing, just to reiterate, remember this is an off-road sway bar. You're not gonna buy this for on-road drivability for your Jeep. This is gonna be for your off-road drivability, comfort, and as you can see, stability and keeping that body level. In a lot of situations where having no sway bar whatsoever would make it a little more sketchy. So do you love it? Honestly, it it was way better than I thought as far as, I was concerned like Even her. on-road drivability. On-road drivability, I was a little concerned. I thought it was gonna be too much and something I was gonna have to like just deal with, but it's not. And then the minute I hit those curbs, Game over. I was like, keep in mind, we do have a really incredibly well set up suspension on this as well, though. Oh, so of course. all this stuff together, oh, it's nice. Obviously, the next step though is to test it out completely off road. But I mean, good thing. Yeah, we're uh, we're headed to Utah, guys. Next up, San Hollow. Hollow. <laughs> so we'll have plenty of time to test it out. But in the meantime, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find. All your Life Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com. All your Life Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. We love you so much. And, and we will see you next time. Later, guys. Hi, Layla. You see, you see Jelly? Hey, let me, let me talk to mom. Layla, let me talk to mom. Layla, say hi to Jelly.
Adorable. <laughs> Say light bright nation. <laughs>